Hi guys, in this video, we are going to learn that why do we need dynamic programming in order to solve this problem of finding optimal binary search tree. In my previous video or the first video of optimal binary search tree, I discussed many things about optimal binary search tree. First of all, I gave a brief description about binary search trees. Then we learned that what are external nodes and what is an extended binary search tree. Then we learned how to find out the total cost of a binary search tree. And then finally we declared that that binary search tree which gives the minimum total cost is the optimal binary search tree. Right? But the complexity of finding the optimal binary search tree out of all the binary search trees that are possible with the given nodes and the given successful and unsuccessful search probability, the complexity was exponential. So we need to reduce that complexity. So for that, we actually use the method of dynamic programming in order to solve this problem of finding the total cost and the structure of optimal binary search tree. So in this video, we will learn that why exactly do we need dynamic programming? I'll prove it to you that why dynamic programming is the best method in order to approach this problem. So uh, in the last video, we actually stopped over here. We came to know that that tree which actually minimizes this total cost is actually the optimal binary search tree, right? So now uh, to avoid confusion, I refer to this cost as the total cost in the previous video but this can also be cost, called as cost of i comma j or in short form we can write it as c of i comma j. So now what is i and j over here? So uh, basically every time j minus i will be the number of nodes in my BST, okay, in my binary search tree. This will always hold true. Whenever I write C of I comma J, if suppose I'm writing C of 2 comma 4, you can automatically say that there are two nodes in this tree because J minus I is equal to 2. 4 minus 2 is equal to 2. So that means there are two nodes in this tree for which we are calculating the cost that is actually C of 2 comma 4. So this is just the terminology that we are going to use in this video. Okay. First of all, let us understand that why do we need dynamic programming to solve this problem, okay? So when we solve this problem of finding the total cost of an optimal binary search tree using DP, the formula that is used is C i comma j is equal to minimum k ranges from i plus 1 to j C i k minus 1 plus c k j plus w of i comma j. Okay. So earlier we learned that uh, what is actually c i comma j? It is the total cost of the subtree or the tree uh, ranging from i to j. But what about w i comma j? So basically w i comma j is uh, actually the weight of the, of the subtree ranging from i to j and how is it calculated? So w i comma j is equal to summation of k is equal to i plus 1 to j k is equal to is k is equal to i plus 1 to j p k plus q k plus after the summation plus q i okay so this summation it ranges from i plus 1 to j and there is another term that is q i which is not included in the summation right so this is so basically we can determine from this formula that the weight of a subtree ranging from i to j is equal to the sum of the successful and unsuccessful search probabilities in that range, right? With the exclusion of this qi that is actually starting from i. So in this case, the unsuccessful search probability started starts from i, whereas the successful search probability that is p starts from i plus 1, right? 
So we are still not reached to an answer to this question that why do we need dp? So this is the formula for dynamic programming. We learned what is cost i comma j and what is weight i comma j or c i comma j and w i comma j. So now let us take a very small example and try to solve that example using this formula. So in this example, I'll just take three keys. And these are the successful and unsuccessful search probabilities. Right? So basically in this example, if we try to find out the total cost of this tree, we will write it as C0, 3. Why 0? Because uh, the unsuccessful search probability is starting from 0, Q0. And uh, why 3? Because we have got 3 nodes in the tree. So 3 minus 0 is equal to 3. That is the reason why we are taking the upper bound as 3. So now uh, when we solve this example using this formula, we can write i is 0 and my k ranges from 0 to 3. Uh, so what, what can be the values of k in this case? k can uh, be actually 1, it cannot be 0, 2 and 3. So, uh, so basically in the first case, I'll take my k as 1, okay? So my i will and j will always remain same. Z, so my i is 0 and in when k is 1, k minus 1 is equal to 0 plus c k comma j. So k is 1 in this case, j is 3. So this is actually k when k is equal to 1, right? So now I have will have to solve for k is equal to 2 and 3 as well. So when I do k for k is equal to 2, so my i is 0 and my k minus 1 is 1 plus c. My k is actually 2 in this case and my j is, will, is always 3. So this is my k is equal to 2, right? So now again we need to solve. Again we need to solve for k is equal to 3 because k is ranging from 1 to 3. So i is 0 comma k minus 1 for uh, when k is equal to 3, k minus 1 is equal to 2 plus c uh, 3 comma j is 3, right? Plus there is also a weight term and that ranges from 0 comma 3, i comma j. Okay. So now if you look at this very closely, do you know the value of uh, c 0 comma 0? So it's uh, as the definition that we learned earlier of c i comma j, so j minus i is actually equal to the number of nodes in the uh, BST. So in this case, what is j, uh, j minus i? So c, in case of c 0 comma 0, the j minus i is basically 0, right? So that means how many nodes are there in this BST? 0. So what will be the cost of that BST? 0. So we actually know the cost of this term or the value of this term and we know it is 0, right? That is just through intuition. Uh, what about C3, 3? Again, it will be 0 because 3 minus 3 is equal to 0 and we learnt earlier that J minus I is actually equal to the total number of nodes in the tree, right? We learned that when C I, J is written, so in this case, J minus I is the total number of nodes in BST, right? We know this, okay. So in, ac accordingly, this is will also be 0. But what about C1, 3? Do we know the value of C1, 3 or the cost of the binary search tree ranging from 1 to 3? No, we never saw that. We started from here and here we have, we don't know the value of C1, 3. What about C0, 1? Uh, how many nodes are there in C0, 1? One node, 1 minus 0. Again, we don't know the value of this. We don't know the value of this, this. Just we know those values where the number of nodes in the BST is, BST is 0. 
and we also don't know the weight 0 comma 3 but we can find out the weight 0 comma 3 by actually doing the this calculation through, with the help of these probabilities we will do that later so first let us try to find out c1 comma 3 so in order to find c1 comma 3 again we need to use the same formula right so now we did that for c0 comma 3 earlier now we will do it for c1 comma 3 so C1 comma 3 using the same formula. So K ranges from 1 to 3. So it K will in this case K can only be K can only have the values 2 and 3, right? Not 1. And so if we write down all these terms for when K is equal to 2 and K is equal to 3, it will come as I is 1. And my k in the first case will be 2. No, we do, uh, we are, have to write k minus 1, not k. So here we will have 1 plus k is equal to 2 and j is equal to 3. So this was for k is equal to 2. And what about, let us separate this. Uh, so the, in the second term k is equal to 3. So my i is 1 and k minus 1, this term 2 plus k is equal to 3 comma 3 right okay so now if you look now uh, uh, can we find out the value of c1 comma 3 this will be 0 right as explained over here and this will also be 0 but do you know the value of c2 comma 3 and c1 comma 2 no we don't know so in that case what we need to do we need to again over here find out the value of c2 comma 3 and then maybe we will have all the terms 0 we will have to uh, try try to find that out and see if all the terms are coming as 0 and then we can uh, get this value and in the same way we need to find the value of c1 comma 2 so what are we actually basically doing over here now we are actually coming to this question of why we need dynamic programming in this problem so uh, we started from c0 comma 3 or we started with three nodes BST. Then we actually didn't know uh, the cost of a, a subtree or a sub uh, binary search tree with two nodes. So then we moved to two nodes BST. Then we are going to find out for one node BST a binary search tree with just one node. So to find out the two nodes binary search tree, we actually need to find out the cost of a one node binary search tree. And why we are finding the two nodes binary search tree cost? Because we need that to calculate a bigger problem that is the three nodes binary search tree. So what are we doing over here? We are actually using the property of the optimal substructure, right? So if you have previously learned dynamic programming, you will know what is optimal substructure that we are actually dividing our bigger problem into smaller problems and those smaller problems are actually giving us optimal results and these uh, the and when we aggregate all those smaller problems, we actually uh, get the final value for our bigger problem, right? So that is what we are doing. So we found out that this problem is actually a case of optimal substructure. Now, uh, there is another condition that uh, a dynamic programming follows. What is that? That is overlapping subproblems. So, does this problem have overlapping subproblems? Let us see. So, if you look at this problem, we have started from cost of 0 comma 3 and we uh, because we didn't know the cost of 1 comma 3 so we will actually find the cost of 1 comma 3 but in this case we didn't know the cost of 2 comma 3 so we will go to find the cost of 2 comma 3 so finally we will get the cost of 2 comma 3 I'm not finding it out over here suppose the cost that we get is 1.2 okay so we got that cost over here but do you see this thing over here that we already have the cost of 2 comma 3 but when we come over here when we are in the first step itself there is again another C cost of 2 comma 3 so to find out this cost what we will do we will we will again 
try to find out the cost of 2 comma 3 but don't you think it is unnecessary because that cost is already there with us we have already found out that cost why don't we save it and use it for this for finding this cost of 2 comma 3 so what is this this is actually a problem of overlapping sub problems isn't it interesting so now i guess you understand that why do we need dynamic programming to solve this problem because we are facing over here optimal substructure as well as overlapping sub problems right now let us uh, so we understood that why do we require dynamic programming to solve this problem now let us delve deeper into this weight we have seen the cost and tried to find out the cost now let us delve deeper into uh, weight okay i forgot uh, that over here in c a cost of 1 comma 3 we will also have a weight of 1 comma 3 right i forgot to write it down over here so if we need to find out suppose the weight of w 0 comma 2 right or we need to find out the weight of uh, this binary search tree so what will be the weight according to this formula it will be first i am writing down this term q0 plus p1 plus q1 plus p2 plus q2 and of course this we will get from here the in, in the question itself we will have these values and we will be very easily able to find out the weight of 0 comma 2 what about the weight of uh, 0 comma 3 uh, in that case again i am writing this term first in the formula that is q0 plus p1 plus q1 plus p2 plus q2 plus p3 plus q3 right it is going from 0 to 3 or 1 to 3 in this case for this summation okay so what do you notice uh, the difference between the weight of 0 comma 2 and 0 comma 3 if you see very clearly until this part it is same only this is the addition in this uh, weight of 0 comma 3 so can we conclude it this way that weight of i comma j plus 1 is basically equal to weight of i comma j plus p j plus 1 plus q j plus 1 can we write it down this way so i have basically determined this formula only from this part by doing these two calculations so in order to solve this problem of cost of 0 comma 3 we actually need to solve the smaller problems as we saw earlier right 1 comma 3 with two nodes then even lesser problem of 2 comma 3 then finally it will boil down to 2 comma 2 and 3 comma 3 which is a zero node problem right so basically uh, to find out one node bst a problem we need to find out a zero node bst problem so what are we uh, finding out first we are first finding out c 0 comma 0 c 1 comma 1 c 2 comma 2 c 3 comma 3 and then we are moving to one node problems that is c 0 comma 1 c 1 comma 2 and c 1 comma 3 and and c 2 comma 3 and then we are moving to two node binary search trees that is c 0 comma 2 c 1 comma 3 and then finally we are getting c 0 comma 3 right so that's it for this video so in this video we learned that while solving the problem of finding optimal binary search tree we were uh, facing the issue of overlapping sub problems and optimal substructure that is why the method of dynamic programming is the best method to solve this problem of optimal binary search tree so in the next video let's together solve an example of finding the total cost and the structure of an optimal binary search tree when you are given a set of keys and their corresponding successful and unsuccessful search probabilities so meet you in the next video thank you